minute to go before we get started, about uh, two minutes to go before we get started. Our uh, first speaker is going to be Bennett McDowell. He's going to be talking about the wave theory, so we appreciate him taking time to be here. I see uh, Gene is in here as well. Gene, great to see you again. So uh, we'll get started here. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Trading Pub. Uh, we are going to record this event. We'll post a copy on our website, which is tradingpub.com. The copy will probably be posted most likely tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll email it out to everyone if we can't get it up this afternoon, but we'll email you guys a copy so uh, we get that posted for you. And real quick, what I'll, I'll do if you haven't been with us before, uh, I'm going to play a quick video just to tell you a little bit about the Trading Pub, then we'll turn things over to our first speaker. Well, again, we appreciate you guys being here with us, and uh, at this time, I'm going to turn things over to our first guest is uh, Bennett McDowell. You see Bennett and Gene here in the room, so we always appreciate you guys uh, sharing quality education with us, and I'll turn things over to you. The next 30 minutes, the room is yours. We'll put a timer up where everybody can kind of keep track of things, but I appreciate everybody taking the time to be here today. Morgan, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And I, let me just do a quick audio check before we get going here, folks. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? And by the way, very snappy uh, video there, Morgan. I like that. Very cool. All right, good. So you got the audio okay? Great. All right, well, we're going to um, talk about the wave theory today. And my name is Bennett McDowell. And I'm going to progress through the slides in just a moment. But one of the things I, I want to share with you is that um, in, in market theory, there's many different forecasting methods. And when we talk about a forecasting method, we're really talking about a theory. And a theory is really fantasy until it is what? Proven as reality by market price when we talk about the wave. So I want you to keep that in mind. When we talk about forecasting, we also want to be able to also compare that against the reality of what's going on in the market. And so we're going to discuss that as well and show you how we use that as an advantage in order to actually prove if the theory is working. So that's one of the ways in which I want you to keep that in mind during the presentation today. The other thing I like to do is whenever I do a presentation, I always like to give away something free. And what I do is each Wednesday I do a, a pre-market brief for a company called TradeStation. And actually TradeStation opens up this pre-market brief just so you know to everybody. So we have a lot of folks using NinjaTrader, eSignal for example that attend these events. So let me put a link up to this um, report, and you can go ahead and, and access that. So I put it up in the text chat area, and I see there's an announcement button too. So let me try one of those too and see if that works. That way I got you covered there. All right, so you can access that. Uh, we ask for your name and email, uh, and then it takes you right directly to a PDF file that you can download and actually refer to throughout the week. But we've got a, a lot of uh, neat, price levels. We've got some analyst upgrades and downgrades, some, 
some stocks in the in the markets and so forth that uh, we like. So you may want to check that out. I'm going to actually have more links later on the presentation. So stay tuned as we walk our way through the slides here. All right, and as Morgan said, my name is Bennett McDowell. I'm with uh, TradersCoach.com, and we founded TradersCoach.com in the 1990s and incorporated around the turn of the uh, year, around 2000. Um, and uh, we started out as a website primarily, okay, running uh, uh, basically uh, trading accounts for high net worth individuals. We also started out uh, by running it as a coaching session. And then that developed, of course, and grew as folks wanted to know how we were doing so well in the market. So check us out at traderscoach.com. We got a lot of cool stuff there that you can look at. I've written three books that are available uh, at major bookstores. And they were published by Wiley. Uh, Traders Money Management System deals with how to uh, actually employ a money management and risk control program to your trading. One of the feedbacks we're getting on this book is that the information is usable. There's so much portfolio mathematics out there. What we've tried to do in this book is simplify so you can actually integrate it right away into a usable program. So you may want to check that out if you need help with your money manager. The art of trading, art stands for applied reality trading. This is the way we stay uh, reality based in the markets with entry exits and then applying our risk control. My latest book, Survival Guide for Traders, came out last year. And this is basically a book on running your trading as a business. And we have cool business plans and all kinds of stuff tailored for traders in that book as well. I have a new book coming out. This one's published by McGraw-Hill. And this one's going to be out in the fall and winter of this year. And it's called Elliott Wave Techniques Simplified. So I'm very excited about this book. And we're putting it together uh, as I speak, so to speak. All right, quick presentation disclaimer. We're going to look at some charts today. We're going to talk about trading. But we also need to remind you there is risk in trading. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that past performance is not necessarily equal futures performance. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's important to realize that and realize the risks involved in trading. But you all probably know that already. All right, let's get into the topic. Why use the Elliott Wave? Well, we like the Elliott Wave. We've been using it for a long time. As I said, it's a forecasting tool of technical analysis. And it, we're, the, we're, we, the reason we use it is basically to make money. We're, we're forecasting price movement for profit. We want to, the Elliott Wave does a great job of keeping us in the dominant trends, whether they're bullish or bearish. And, and also keeps us out of corrections based on the corrective theory in the Elliott Wave count. So we're going to cover that. Encompassing mass psychology. Basically, the wave theory is something that has been observed really since the beginning of the markets. And Ralph Nelson Elliott was the one that, that actually uh, came up with the Elliott Wave Theory back in the 1930s. And he noticed repetitive patterns in the market. And the Elliott Wave is interesting because there's a lot of phenomena in nature that we necessarily can't explain. But we see it, and it repeats again and again. Things like, I mean, even astronomers, for example, look into the stars, and they see a black hole. They see it and see what it does, but they don't understand exactly how it works. But you know, if you see one, you want to run like heck, right? But in any case, the Elliott Wave is very similar. It's repetitive. You see these repetitive patterns. Why nature? Why this works? Not only in the stock market, but they see Elliott Wave structure throughout nature, along with Fibonacci as well. And nobody can necessarily explain all this. But through observation, you come up with a probability of whether this particular pattern will repeat again. OK? So that's important. All right, and it does take into account mass psychology. Knowing what market cycle you are in. Are you in a bullish trend, bearish trend, sideways market, correction? And those are known as wave twos and fours in the Elliott Wave theory. We also can use Elliott Wave to uh, calculate our risk to reward for our pr a price target zone. And we combine this with Fibonacci as well. We use the Fibonacci extensions for price target zones for wave five. 
and we use Fibonacci retracements for our corrections on where waves two and four sit in. All right, so as we stated, just a quick summary, the Elliott wave principle is a form of technical analysis. It is not fundamental analysis, which covers price earnings ratios, uh, multipliers, uh, and even things like earnings and so forth. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, instead, this, the principle states that the collective investor psychology or crowd psychology moves in waves from optimism to pessimism. And these waves create patterns as evidence in the price movement of a market at every degree of the trend. Okay, and so Elliott, the Elliott model say, says that the market prices alternate between five waves and three waves at all degrees. So we're going to take a look a little bit more from a um, picture standpoint so you can see kind of what that looks like. Now this is basically an Elliott wave structure unfolding here. And you can see these in the market. Sometimes they're not quite as clear, and sometimes they're very clear. And we're going to show you how to make sense out of Elliott wave counts when they're not clear as well. When you have a move up from the left-hand side down in this area here, let me get a, a little dot that I can put here so you guys can follow. When we start down here on the left and move our way up, what we first have in the beginning is wave one in a major trend. And we have usually a pullback in that trend, but not a change in trend, and that's wave two. Then we have the biggest and, and fastest moving wave, which is wave three. This is a wave you usually have gaps in the direction of the trend. You usually have hyperbolic moves where you have maybe anywhere from five to ten or more price bars with higher highs and higher lows. Then you have a wave four correction and most volume, as Wayne says. Most volume is correct. Um, then you have a wave four correction. And wave fours and wave twos, what we use is Fibonacci retracement lines to help us get a price target zone of where the correction should end before the next wave up, which is wave five on this chart. OK? All right, before wave one, Mark asks, what happens? Well, usually, Mark, um, you're coming off a downtrend, and so now the trend is reversing. Or you may be coming off a base after a downtrend. So that's two things that it could be at that particular point. Good question. Now, for right now, notice I have a number three up here and a number four here. Notice the number four. Okay, has an A, B, C correction, all right? Now, not to confuse you, but that number three, notice it sits on top of a wave five up here. And so in this example, what we're seeing is five waves inside a wave three. And then we have a wave four, which is an A, B, C correction. So there's waves with inside waves, which take us to our next chart, Let me go one more here. We'll come back to that, which is called fractal symmetry. And the fractal symmetry in the market, as you can see from this chart, which is the same pattern that was on the other chart, now what we've drawn is the little mini waves inside each leg up and each correction down. So not to confuse you, but this is called fractal symmetry. And basically, when we go, for example, from a daily chart up to a higher time frame, a weekly chart, we're going to see a, a wave pattern on the daily chart that will fit inside the weekly chart. So the idea is you're going to have fractal symmetry, which means that the charts make sense when you take a look at waves inside waves. All right, and for this presentation, that's all I want you to know. That's all I want you to focus on. I don't want to get too heavy into this because uh, you certainly can. All right, now, the other thing I want to talk about before going further is that when um, Elliot back in the 30s came up with his wave count, you know, there were no computers. Basically, what he used was paper charts 
and study these paper charts for reoccurring patterns, etc. And then along came computers, and along came indicators, and along came all the computing power in the world to help us, okay, decipher certain uh, momentum in the market, and et cetera, et cetera. So what we've done now, what we find works very well, is when we take Elliott's original classic Elliott wave theory and combine it with the modern Elliott wave theory, which is confirming the price structure with some specialized indicators in order to help us determine or confirm wave counts. This also helps, okay, take out the subjectivity in the Elliott wave count. And also, again, uh, back into thinking about whether there are random patterns or repeating patterns, what the statistics show in observation is that these Elliott wave patterns of five with corrective wave threes occur a lot more often than just a random event. All right, let's move on. Okay, now, notice here uh, there's, a, there's a number of patterns that can form at different times. We've talked about the five-wave pattern, which is this impulsive wave pattern here. And the impulsive wave patterns represent uh, the overall trend. Think of them as that way. During waves two and four, all right, you're going to have corrections. And there are several different types of corrections. The most common type is just the regular zigzag correction called an ABC. But at times you get a flat correction, a triangular correction, and a special case diagonal correction. The bottom line, to make things as simple as possible, if you can spot wave three and you're going into a wave four and you can't see the ABC zigzag pattern, then what I would suggest is that you're probably in a complex correction and it's one of those below the zigzag correction. And it's important to realize that because it will keep you from getting in too soon. And how we handle that of not getting in too soon is we identify the key levels of support and resistance put up by the A wave and the B wave on a flat and so forth on a triangular and on a special case diagonal triangle, which doesn't happen that much, all right, you isolate the uptrending pattern, okay? So there are ways to handle that, and that's exactly what you want to learn how to do in order to do this. Now, classical a wave theory, okay, this is an example. Just looking at price structure. That's where I want you to focus on here, just looking at price structure. Notice we also encompass three charts in here. And the purpose of the three charts is to show fractal symmetry, which is what we discussed before, that there are waves inside waves. So on the upper left-hand chart, okay, we notice it is a, a monthly chart. So these are fairly long-term charts. And notice we have the one, two, three, four, five pattern, but then they put a number one at the top, and then an ABC correction number two here. Well, if we jump over to the yearly chart to the right, Notice how that monthly chart fits in with the yearly pattern. Notice here this one and two in red carries over from the left-hand chart. And the one represents a wave one up on a longer-term time frame, whereas on a monthly chart, this would be the end of the trend uh, when you get to wave five and you're going into a corrective series at that point. The chart at the bottom is a five-year chart. And notice how the one-year chart fits inside the five-year chart. This is an example of fractal symmetry, waves with inside waves. And there's certain time frames uh, from, for example, if you're on a daily, a weekly is a great time frame, one up from the actual symmetry on the daily. And so there are certain multipliers that are best to use. And surprisingly enough, Fibonacci numbers seem to work best. Uh, on the actual higher time frames, okay? And let's see, we got uh, DH is saying today's uh, SPX futures on five minutes, good example of this topic. 
uh, we see them all the time. You know, we day trade the E-minis and the NASDAQs and, and futures and so forth, and we see these patterns both intraday and end of day, which is another really good example of fractal symmetry. It doesn't matter the time frame. These patterns will reoccur as traders are interacting on that particular frame, time frame. Okay, so here is a complex uh, example of a correction. And one of the things I just quickly want to point out here is in the complex corrections, notice that you have something that should look familiar to you out there in technical analysis land. That's a pennant, right? You know, we saw one of these back in October 28th, uh, October uh, 2008, rather. And I was on a uh, day before the market dropped 1,000 uh, points. If anybody remembers that day, I happened to be on the Gabe Wisdom radio show. And he was asking me what's going to happen. And I told him, we're seeing a pennant and a wave two correction. And if it gives way to a wave three, we could see between a six or 800 point drop in the market. Well, sure enough, boom, it fell like a, a, a ton of bricks when it broke below the lower pennant line and went into a wave three. Okay, so when you see these, these are extremely powerful but you don't see them that often because they will only occur during a complex, what they call correction. In this case, it's a triangular correction. All right, now, no, um, no concept goes without some, some uh, uh, criticism, of course, and there is criticism on the Elliott Wave that it, many feel it is subjective. And I think at times it is. I think when you're using price structure alone, okay, there's times when you get into some of these corrective patterns that are complex that it's hard to count it. When that happens, what we'd like to do is go up a higher time frame and see if that clarifies what's going on for us. And most of the times when we do that, we'll see that we are in a correction on a higher time frame, which is causing a messy lower time frame. All right, but it, but uh, also, too, when people say that it's subjective, they're usually focusing on just price structure. So here comes the place where we want to add in the modern theory of Elliott Wave to help us confirm Elliott Wave counts. Okay, and so the goal here is to take the subjectivity out of wave counting. That's the goal of any Elliottitian. All right. Now, I've created a, um, a program to do this. In fact, we've been so successful with it that McGraw-Hill has asked me to write a book on it. And basically, it's uh, on this particular uh, portion of how we really take the subjectivity out of the Elliott wave. What we're really doing, okay, is forming a, what we call a probability matrix. And we're assigning probability percentages to some of the things that we look at to confirm an Elliott wave count that we call connecting the dots, all right? And so we take a look at classical approach. We take a look at Fibonacci levels. We have some proprietary uh, great add-on indicators called the OWL, Optimum Wave Locator, for you Elliott Wave fans out there that basically can confirm Elliott Wave counts. We also have something called a PTF indicator, which identifies major ends to impulsive waves. Uh, we look at fractals, volume, as somebody said earlier, price compression, channels and pennants during certain complex waves. And again, we assign this to a probability matrix, and then we always use risk control with uh, exact trade entries and exits in case it's one of these probable times that we are wrong. So everything in the market is probabilities. Okay, we go with the highest probability wave count, and if we're wrong, we don't get killed because we have risk control. And I'm sure everybody out there is, is, has some form of risk control, and it is extremely important. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is the OWL indicator real quick here. And basically, uh, the purpose of it is to help you count the Elliott waves and identify and locate wave three. Well, it tells us whether we have a bullish or bearish wave count. and We also look for divergence in it. It is not used alone. It is used as one of the uh, technical tools we use to connect the dots. And on this example here, what we look for is we look for an owl that is extremely on a bullish trend, has the highest 
histogram value. And then you have to correlate it with price. And basically, when you start to see that, hey, from a, from a classical standpoint, this looks like a wave three going up here. Hopefully, you can see my dot. Okay. Then you have a go down to the owl histogram. And we're looking at what, what it did. It identify a wave three here. Yes, it did. So that makes sense. Then we had a major pullback here. Now, if you have the owl, you would be confused at this point whether you are entering a major wave four or just one of those small waves inside a wave. The owl remained positive during that entire pullback. That indicates it's a wave four inside a wave three. So wave three actually didn't end until it made one more high here over on this price bar. That's a big important uh, step in taking a lot of subjectivity out of the count. We know as soon as the owl goes negative, which it did over in this point here, that we are now in a wave four, a corrective wave. Until that goes negative below the zero line, that's what we mean by negative when it goes below the zero line, we know we're in a major correction of some type. Okay? That's not a change in trend, by the way. If you have a wave three and a major wave four, you're going to get a major correction, but then you still have wave five, because remember there's five waves in a trend. So the next wave up will be wave five to complete the trend. Then you'll have a major, major correction. All right, let's go on again. All right, here is an example where you do have a, a three here. You have a four here that went negative on the owl, and then you have higher highs and a bullish owl with bearish divergence. You always have bearish divergence between wave five and wave three. If you don't, and you instead you have higher highs, and the owl happens to get higher than it was previously, well, then that's the new wave three, and the owl will move wave three over to the new one. All right, same thing here. Okay, very similar charts to the white background. There's your bearish divergence there, so you could see it a little better. Okay, again, the million dollar question. Does the Elliott wave theory work? Well, let's take a look at some uses in the past here. Again, we rely on a probability matrix to actually interpret with a probability percentage what the best wave count is. Okay, so in this example here, we had a move to the upside indicated by a major wave three here. Then the owl did not go negative. So all of this is wave three. We trail our stops up using the applied reality trading system. If you're using a trading approach at home there, whatever you use on price structure, you can apply that here. You can even use trend lines if you want. But uh, we expect a wave four after this and then another wave five. On this one, you can see we had a, a three top here, four, because we had a negative out, and now we're going into five. Okay, three unfolding still, okay, but notice as prices get higher, we're seeing bearish divergence build inside uh, wave three, so we're getting near the top of wave three. All right, so let's continue on and take a look at some more here. All right, we used it back in 2002 when we were looking at a bottom uh, for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And uh, this chart was done in 2002 before the 2003 bottom was put in. But the wave four Fibonacci retracement levels, uh, along with some time extensions and so forth, indicated that that elliptical would be the ending point for wave four. And if you go back and look on the charts uh, back then, you'll certainly see that's exactly where it ended. Here's Apple this year, okay? We, uh, if you had been tuning in with us, not only at the Trade Station briefs, but during our weekly webcasts, you'll notice that uh, what we did here was we identified wave three. We put a price target zone 
before wave five had even hit a high. So these lines were drawn before, not after the fact. Okay, so then we had a wave five high hit the price target zone right here. We sold off. Notice the bearish divergence between three and five. Notice four. Now we have a new wave three down. This entire move on Apple is wave three. The owl just went positive. We're going into wave four. We expect a retracement up into this level here. We got a, a little bit of a bullish correction that's going to ensue now on Apple. It won't be straight up. You'll have an ABC correction. And then we'll have more lows before we have more highs. The long-term charts, just so you know, on Apple are bullish. This is a correction in the long-term charts and is represented by a tradable, bearish, impulsive wave down on the daily charts. But the long-term weekly and monthly charts are very bullish on Apple. So after this completes, then it will be time to go long again. But it's not done yet. Don't get fooled by the little move to the upside at this point. Okay, this is uh, another stock. Uh, again, notice it's in wave three. We did a quick scalp on this one. This We have a service called um, the Weekly Trading Picks, and basically it is, it is a fun, it's been doing phenomenal. We started it in October 26th, and we had, uh, I don't know, 39 trades in December, and we were up about 15%. Now we've got, uh, since January to March 24th, we had about 97 uh, trades, and we're up 500%, okay? Um, and this is an example of how we are looking at uh, Elliott Wave, we're looking at price structure, we're looking at the PTF indicator at the bottom, we're assigning probabilities to this, and going with the best setups in the shortest period of time. And this was a very cheap one, so it was a nice trade. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a link up here for the actual results so you all can see what they actually were trade by trade. And I'm going to put that up in here. And that way I'm not just cherry picking things. Okay, so let's... Uh, See if I can't put that up in the announcements as well. Okay, so there's another link for you. So you may want to check that out, bookmark the page, okay, and then come back to it. Um, but so far we're up 518% uh, and uh, still going strong. So we're doing really well on that, and it's using the theories in here. Okay, I just uh, got to wrap it up. Uh, here's how to contact us as well. If you're interested in learning more about the top trading picks, I'm going to put another link. I'm just going to do it in the chat area here. And please visit our website. You can. We've got a lot of cool and free information there. I'm going to put up some free educational videos for you as well as another link. So let me get that up there for you all. And then I'm going to have to sign off because my time allotment is done. But I want to thank, listen, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to tune in. And again, I want to thank DTI and Trading Pub for putting these educational events together. Um, these, are, this, these are really excellent. You've got a great lineup of speakers here today. So uh, take a little bit of, you know, listen to them all, see which one you think uh, makes the most sense for you, and then take a few tools or ideas from them and apply it in your trading. But always use risk control. All right, folks, I'm signing off. Thank you very much. And I'll turn this, Morgan, back over to you.